Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a new device from Roku. This is their sound bar. They call it the Smart Sound Bar. And what it's got is a full-blown Roku built inside of it. So all you have to do is connect this up to your television and you get better sound and a Roku that can get most of the major streaming services delivered to you. So that's pretty cool. And beneath it is their new subwoofer. And this connects wirelessly to the sound bar to add a little more kick to the audio. So we're going to take a closer look at this combo here in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Roku, both devices. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own, but nobody is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this combo is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Most Roku devices fall into the budget range of cost, and this one is no exception. So the sound bar itself here costs $180, and again, that includes the Roku that is built inside of it. They're selling the wireless subwoofer for the same price, another $180, but right now there is a bundle offer at some retailers where you can get both for $300 total. So if you are looking to get the full set here, uh, 300 bucks looks to be the current price point. And it's not a bad deal for what it is, uh, especially when you look at other sound bars that are out there. But one thing to note on this is that this is not a surround sound system. So you're not going to get Atmos audio. Uh, you're also not getting basic Dolby surround out of this either. It is strictly a stereo speaker with an added subwoofer. Now inside of the sound bar are four two and a half inch uh, full range speakers. I believe they are drivers. So you have two on this side, two on the other side. Uh, they sound good. They're really loud, a good range of sound. I do wish the bass was punchier on the sound bar, but I guess that's why you would buy the subwoofer to add a little bit more oomph to it. So it's certainly going to sound better than your TV speakers, a lot better. Uh, the thing that impressed me the most was the quality of dialogue much crisper, uh, much easier to hear and understand. Uh, so if you find yourself having issues hearing your TV all the time, this will certainly solve that problem completely. I can't really portray to you how it sounds in a YouTube video because everyone is listening to this on their own set of speakers, but I can say it's a definite improvement over whatever your TV has built inside of it. And if you're in the market for this, uh, there's a good chance that you are using a pretty uh, low cost TV with some pretty lousy speakers. Uh, this will definitely be an enhancement, although I do wish it had a little bit more bass punch on the bar itself. But of course you can resolve that by getting the subwoofer into the mix. I do find though I'm missing surround sound when I'm playing with this because this is just stereo. There's nothing coming behind you. It's not doing anything to simulate audio coming from behind you. So if you've ever played around with a surround sound system, this is going to feel lacking to you. I do wish they had some additional speakers you could pair up to it. So you could have some speakers in the back. Uh, typically a surround sound system involves at its simplest level, stereo speakers, a center channel speaker, and two speakers in the back plus the subwoofer. Again, this is just stereo, so everything's coming out in front. And what will happen is, is that a lot of the audio will get mixed into these two speakers. So things that might typically be behind you are going to be a lot of noise coming out of the front at you. Not bad, but just a little different than uh, what I would prefer. So just be prepared. Again, it's not a surround sound system and there will be other soundbar kits that offer you the full package of rear speakers plus uh, the front facing audio. But this does have a Roku built inside that those don't have. Let's take a look at the connections on the back. Now Roku recommends that you connect this sound bar to a TV equipped with HDMI ARC and you will know that you have a TV with ARC because they typically label one of the input ports on your television with that designation. ARC stands for Audio Return Channel and what that will do is channel all of the audio coming out of your TV through the sound bar. So if you have a game console connected to it, for example, on a different HDMI port, it will fire the audio through the ARC port back to the sound bar. And that port is also how the Roku will connect to your television. Now, if your TV lacks ARC, they've included an optical input. This is not an output, but an input. And they give you the cable in the box to connect it up with that. Uh, so what you would do is connect it to the optical port on your television to get the audio out of the TV into the sound bar. 
If you lack either one of those options, then uh, this will only give you sound when it's in Roku mode because there's no other input beyond the HDMI and the optical. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I did connect it up to a computer monitor a little bit earlier and the sound was fine out of the uh, sound bar here, but of course any other inputs on that monitor will not output to here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this will be probably less flexible than a regular speaker system or receiver set that you might be looking at. It's very much tied in uh, with that ARC port on there. Uh, there's also a USB port and you can use this for playing back your own media files. So you could take a USB hard drive or a USB stick and play lossless FLAC audio, for example, MP3 files, all the popular audio formats are supported. It also supports H.264 and H.265 video. So if you have video that you shot with your phone or perhaps with a camcorder or something else that you've downloaded, you can all uh, play that stuff on here through that USB port there. Now I am disappointed though that it doesn't include an ethernet jack on it. Uh, because it does support 4K video, and a lot of streaming services now are pushing a good amount of bandwidth to deliver that video to you, and it's always best to have a very reliable connection to make it happen. So this is Wi-Fi only, uh, but it does have support for wireless AC, so at least you'll get the faster wireless support on here. And I guess because it's not sitting behind your television, but likely out in the open, uh, you'll probably get a better signal, but nonetheless, having an ethernet option would have been nice. You have two mounting screws here for putting it on the wall if you want. Uh, the dimensions on this one are uh, 2.8 inches high, that's about 7 centimeters. It is 32.2 inches long, uh, that's just under 82 centimeters. And then it's 3.9 inches deep, uh, that's just under 10 centimeters. So do your math and figure out what you got for dimensions there. I looked at a few TVs in my house and it was able to sit comfortably underneath all of those. Speaking of televisions, this supports 4K HDR, but just HDR10, not Dolby Vision or 10 Plus, but it will support 60 Hertz at 4K. And we were able to play some YouTube video a little bit earlier at that frame rate and it all worked fine with a good Wi-Fi signal connected. Let me hook this thing up real quick and just show you what the Roku interface looks like. We're not gonna spend all that much time on this because we just covered it in a video the other day, but there are a few things that are different in the interface that I wanted to show you. So let's hook it up and have a look. All right, so we've got our sound bar hooked up right now. I didn't show you where the power cable connected. This is where it connects to. It's got an angled power adapter. Uh, so you'll have the HDMI cable and the power cable pretty much coming out of the same place here. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, just a couple of the audio settings that you have on here. Uh, there really isn't much to adjust even when you have the subwoofer connected. Uh, so if you go over to the audio section here of the Roku settings, uh, what you'll have are options for menu volume, uh, the sound mode, which is something you won't see on a typical Roku device. And I did try to turn on this bass boost mode before I started using the subwoofer. It really didn't make that much of a difference. So I would just leave it on normal. Uh, what you can do if you're getting too much bass, you can either reduce it or do a complete uh, reduction of bass if you don't want any at all. Uh, but my advice would be to leave it on normal and then add in the subwoofer if you really want to get the better uh, audio out of the system here. Uh, they do have some other options here to level out the audio. So if there are TV commercials that are coming on that are too loud, it will kind of smooth everything out. There's also a night mode, which will set a maximum threshold. So if your kids like to stay up late watching TV, you can turn it on night mode and it won't get too loud. Uh, there's also some adjustments here to uh, adjust the clarity of speech. I found it sounded fine with everything off, but if you need that, you've got that option here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so there's not a lot of ability to adjust some of the audio here or balance things out. It's just going to give you some very basic settings for making those adjustments. And then for the Roku system overall, I think it's a, a great way to get a lot of content. We covered this already. Uh, but one of the things that I really like about Roku is that they are not always driving you to things that cost money. They've got a great uh, featured free curation section here that brings in free content from a number of different sources. So there is always something decent to watch on here and you don't have to usually subscribe to anything to get entertained by a Roku device. And this is one thing that I think they do quite well 
partly because they're not making any content themselves, so they're not trying to push you to one source versus the other. And like other Roku devices, the included remote control can control your television, so you can turn on and off the TV. Uh, there's also a way to have it automatically switch the TV into the Roku's input, so you don't have to futz around with too many buttons there. Uh, you got some volume controls here on the side of the remote along with a mute button, and then you can do voice searches with this as well. So I could push the button down, Star Trek The Next Generation. And then what it will do is go out and find all of the different uh, places where I can watch the show. And the nice thing is, is that they're not pushing you to one service over the other. They show you where the show is across many different services and you can choose which one you want to watch. All good stuff. So let's take a closer look now at the subwoofer and getting that set up. It was a very easy process. I just plugged it into the wall and then went into the menu to pair it up. There was nothing to push on the subwoofer. The soundbar found it immediately, and that was it. Very easy to get it up and running. Let's take a closer look at its hardware. So here is the subwoofer. It stands at about a foot tall. It's about 30 centimeters, give or take. On the bottom, it's got a pretty decent sized sub, a 10 inch subwoofer. Uh, the power output on this is 250 watts peak, 125 RMS. Not bad for what you're getting here for a low-end device, and it sounds really nice when paired up with the soundbar. I believe the subwoofer is also compatible with Roku TVs that have the external speakers paired with them. It won't work on its own with one of the Roku TVs, and it will also, of course, work with the soundbar, which I think is probably the ideal pairing. But that is it. It doesn't work with anything else. There are no other inputs. There are no controls to adjust the uh, frequency response, for example. Uh, they rate the frequency response here at 40 to 200 hertz. Uh, so this is a very much a single purpose subwoofer that's not compatible with anything else. Now Roku says you'll get about 30 feet of range on this, so it should work in most living rooms. I tried it in a few rooms throughout the house and it was able to pair up and work very nicely with all the different scenarios I threw at it. Uh, so pretty simple device. I really wish there was more compatibility or at least some basic inputs on the back so you could repurpose it later. Speakers do last a long time. It will undoubtedly outlast the soundbar it's paired with, uh, but unfortunately that is all you're gonna get here. So that'll do it for this look at the Roku soundbar and subwoofer. I think it's a pretty good value overall. It's nice to get a very functional TV streaming box built right into the soundbar. And I think this is going to be very attractive for a lot of people that want to improve their TV audio experience and also want to get a streaming box. You get everything included in here and the compatibility is really, really good with most of the major streaming platforms that are out there. So that is a good thing. I do wish it had a surround sound option uh, because I do like to get that enveloping audio and it's a very nice way to experience a lot of these movies. Uh, we see that on a lot of lower end smart speakers that are out there. So I would love to see them expand this product out a bit to offer that to people. Uh, having a pair of wireless rear speakers would be killer for something like this and I think they could probably make it happen. So that's my uh, only real wish list for this. I think if you're looking for a stereo soundbar, this is a very good value and the subwoofer definitely adds to the experience as well. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.